Welcome to a math booster on trigonometric graphs. What are trigonometric graphs? Well, we have our favorite sine and cosine, and so that's what we're looking at today. Sine and cosine graphs. Why? Wow, because miss got graphs one man. What's the first thing you see when you what you think of when you see sine and cos? You think of triangles, right? Like oh ne, we have this. You if you have a triangle, and there's some some angle here, and you let's say you want to find this height y. And let's say you know the hypotenuse, which is I don't know four, and this one is, no, I'm gonna call it three lah. Okay, let's say you do know this and ask you to find y, you would think of trigo because if you want to find y, opposite over hypotenuse, sine of the angle is opposite over the hypotenuse, which is four. Okay, then you're like, oh, so if I know the angle, I can find my y already. Okay, if you want to do something else, like let's say. I want. I have another triangle, and I want to find x instead. Oh, I don't know why it's x. Maybe I put this five and four. How are you going to find x? X is what adjacent hypotenuse. That sounds like a cos. So you say, oh, cos theta is. What is it? Adjacent na x hypotenuse five. So yes, trigo you will usually see in terms of triangles, but you can take these triangles and turn them into graphs. How le? Ah, okay. Yeah, we will see a animation, very cool one. But first thing, remember, ah, okay, sine you can use to find the height. So height of a triangle, you can use sine. Cos, eh, you can use to find the horizontal component of any kind of things or just the horizontal. Okay, so keep that in mind. Sine verticals, cos horizontal. So let's say, hmm, I want to use the triangle to construct a graph. Okay, I want you to pay attention to the bottom one, the red color one here. Notice what's happening. We have a circle here, right? Why is this circle ah? It's just a circle to guide us. We are going to use a circle to transform triangles into graphs. Well, I can nail all this triangle I draw ah, but let's say I want to put it in a circle. Yeah, like okay, I draw a circle. So I draw. Let's say ah. I choose this angle. I don't know thirty degrees or what. So at thirty degrees, you will have two things. You have a height called the y, and you also have an x. Oh. And the nice thing about choosing a circle is, no matter where you are in a circle, you have the same radius. So this one is a fixed constant, lah. The radius. So you can just keep on changing, changing the angle, change theta, to get different values of x and y, to get x. And y, and that's how we can create a graph. The simulation that we look at. Okay, so we change theta, get different x, get different y. Then you just keep changing, no? How to get x, get y? Nah, just now we say already. If you want to get the y, y will be opposite hypotenuse, sine of thirty degrees. X, eh? X will be adjacent hypotenuse, so cos of thirty degrees. So you keep changing angle, no? Change, 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 and that is what is happening right here. Let's look at the sign, the red color one first. So currently your triangle is here. So you just take the vertical part of the triangle component, then you move that line here. Oh, then you can put a graph. See, move again. Okay, now it's zero, no height. So here will be zero. Then now you move the triangle here, got angle, then got height here also height. Oh, okay. Notice carefully the red color line. The triangle's height is the height in the graph. So just keep changing the angle and keep keep on getting heights. Now, if you look up here, this is the cosine function. You are taking the horizontal part now. So you see the horizontal part. Just take lah. How long is this plot a graph? How long is this green line plot a graph? How long is this? And keep doing this repeatedly. So if I speed this up, it will look something. Actually, let me increase this. Ah, let's increase the step. Okay, I speed this up, ah. So if you do this every for every single angle in the triangle, sorry, every single angle in the circle, you will get a nice sine and cosine graph. Ta ta ta. So that's where the sine and cosine come from, ah. You see the angle down here on the bottom left, the blue color line keep on rotating round and round in a circle. Yes, that's what we call one complete cycle or one complete oscillation. Okay, so how do I pause this? Never mind, lah. I just restart. So that is where the graph come from. You can use triangle in a circle to create graphs by changing theta. You just keep changing theta in the circle, fix your radius, and then you will get all kinds of x and y to put. So how does a graph look like? You need to know the basic shape, ah. So if we have a sine graph, let's use sine. Actually, 
Let me put this aside. Sine graph, and then you want to plot, let's say, y against some quantity. How will a sine graph look like? You need to know that one complete cycle will look like this, like a wave. Okay? And what is this point? Ah? This here is one complete cycle. In terms of what? If you want to say in terms of angle, then that is 360 degree angle. If you say one complete cycle in time, then this is one period of oscillation. One T, uh, period. If you want to say, hmm, what else? Uh? Ah, one wavelength. So one lambda, lo, one full cycle ma, is one wavelength. So this is in terms of length. This is in space. Uh. So all this all mean one complete cycle at this end point. Okay, just remember how uh, the patterns are like that. One more thing you need to know is, uh, it will cross halfway in the middle. So this is one cycle, half cycle, and the beginning will start at zero. It will always start at zero for a basic graph of y equals to sine, I don't want to call it x. Ah. Okay, la, okay, la, sine x, sine x. You can replace x with t with whatever as long as it's a sign of something. So that is the basic shape you need to know. The other one, the cousin, is the cos graph. So we, if you want to draw y equals to cos sine of x, the basic shape, ah, a little bit different already, you're going to start off with here now. Ding, ayo, so out of shape one, my cos graph, like that, and then go back up. So the pattern is you start high up, you go down first, and then come up. So you start at... A, A, A. Let's use red color. Ah. Start at y equals to 1. Huh? Why start at 1? Eh? Oh, yeah, you go and check the triangle. Lah. Okay, so the key idea is if you start at 1 and go down, come up, that means there's a cosine. And also at the end here is oh, yeah, out of range already, lah, but here is the one cycle. Lah. One cycle. Can be 1t, one, 1 lambda, 360 degree, whatever you want to. Uh, express it in. Now, notice the difference between the sine and cos. Sine start from 0. Cos start from 1. And they both are, the basic form have an amplitude of 1. So the biggest they can go, the amplitude is 1. That's it. Okay, down here is what? Negative 1. No? So that's the maximum value you can have, the minimum value you can have. So this is 1, negative 1. Now, this is the basic form. You must need to know how to recognize this. But how do you... What if you've got negative sine x how to draw le? Ah, okay okay what if you have a purple graph that looks like this y equals to negative sine x so if you see a negative in front of the sign means your graph flip upside down okay you put a mirror so it's going to look something like this there. so this one is upside down already it go down first and then it go up. Same thing if you have y equals to negative cos x. Means now you start from negative 1, cross at the same point, go up, come down. This is not standing wave. Ah. Don't confuse it. It's just I'm lazy to draw another graph so I draw on the same place. Okay, So if got negative, mean it's upside down. This one also upside down. Know how to draw. There are more fun things we can do with the graph. Hang on. We say, oh yo, miss, the amplitude is 1. What if the amplitude is bigger than how? So you draw bigger. Lor. So if I have, hmm, how shall we increase the amplitude? Let's say I want to draw y equals to, I don't want amplitude, I want 2 times the amplitude, 2 sine x. Wow. You see the 2 in front here? When there is a number multiplied by your sine function, means now the amplitude is 2 times larger. So if you draw something like this, now here can go up until 2 already. Here can go down until negative 2. Because 2 multiplied by 1 and negative 1. Ma. So this is sine x. So if you want the cosine, also cosine, let's say multiplied by 3 cosine x. Oh, actually let's make it smaller. What if I do 0 0.5 le, or half? Oh, then your amplitude cannot be 1 already. You will go, the shape is still the same like that. Go down, come up. Oh yeah, it looks like underwear. La. Okay, I'm going to say it looks like an underwear. Go down, come up. But now, instead of 1, this is only 0 0.5 or half. Down here, only negative 0 0.5. Because your amplitude is smaller already. Ma. 
Okay, so just remember, if you see a number, this is your amplitude of the graph. So you can change that for your sine and cos. Okay. Um, yes. So your graph becomes squashed and stretched. Oh. Now I'm going to show you a demo how how to see this thing. It's a bit hard to see here, but hey, I have this for you. This is Desmos, very fun to play one. Okay, let's say I want to multiply by amplitude. I want to change the amplitude, so I put A here. La. Can change? Ah, ah yeah, cannot change. Never mind, I use this one. Okay, here is my sine graph. I put an A here. A. Now amplitude is 1. Let's say I want to go from 0 to 3. La, na, la, 0 to 2. La. Okay, so I can change my amplitude. If 0, then 0 amplitude. Lo. If go bigger, 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 then bigger amplitude. Lo. If it's 2, amplitude up here is 2. So you're basically squashing and stretching the graph vertically. You see, vertically it changed. Ma. Doing, doing, doing. Depending on what number I put in the A here. Okay, if A is 0. Uh, sorry, A is 1, then the normal one. No? A is 2. Bigger already. No? So that one you need to know. La, how What does the number mean? How to change the amplitude. Okay, next one you need to know. The last one is, what if... Hmm, we think of this as wave, right? What if we change the frequency of the wave? Let's say I ask you to draw... Okay, what is y equals to sine 2x? Wow, why got 2 inside there one? What is this? So when you see a 2 inside the bracket of the sine, that means the frequency has changed. So how are you going to draw that? Ah? Y, okay, this is the one full cycle, right? Originally, ah, this is 360. Lah. But now, oh, because of 2x, your frequency is higher. So I say frequency higher. So... Now there are two full cycles inside 360. So you draw one, two. Okay, so this is one cycle, two cycle. So one T, two T fit inside a 360 already. You see the difference or not? Compare this one with the original. Ah, this is the original here. You see? This is 360 degree. Here. One cycle only one cycle but now in 360 you have two cycle two cycle or two periods or two wavelength ah, yeah, however you want to say it so that's mean higher frequency you can do the same thing with cosine let's do something different mm, let's say i do 0 0.5 x so this one means Frequency is lower already compared to the original cosine because 0 0.5 ma is supposed to be 1. So if you want to draw the graph, this is 360 degree. Okay. Previously is what ah? You see one full cycle, the underwear shape. One full cycle is 360 degree. But now in 360 degree, you have to put in half a cycle. 0 0.5 is half ma. So you have to say, oh, this is only half a cycle. Ah. So where is half? Ah? Means come until here or then stop already. Okay, no? So that's how your graph will look like. You draw like this. Stop. Half of the underwear only. Because half a cycle. So this is half a cycle. So yeah, no? this number inside here will determine your frequency. Okay, so frequency is varied ah, if you change the number there. Compared to before, if the number is outside of the sign, then your amplitude is varied. Let's look at the animation for how to stretch and squash this graph with higher frequency, lower frequency. Okay, so now we uh, yeah, let's put the amplitude back to 1. Uh. Where is 1? Uh? A... Okay. Ah, okay. So now I say... What shall I call this? Uh? Let's use omega, the W. The kind of represent angular frequency, so frequency for us. Now let's see. Okay, uh, one full cycle now is what about three hundred sixty degree. Uh. but what if I increase the frequency? Let's go from zero to. Well, I really don't know. Uh, five. Uh. 
Ah, uh, 10 la, 10 la, more fun. <laughs> okay, so frequency is 1. Let's change, actually, sorry, let me change it to 4. After the graph will be too small to see. Now I increase my frequency. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, 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 hey. There. So this is our original. Where's my original? Let's add another one. La. Y equals to sine x. Ah, this black color is the original one. But now, I want to see what happened to the red color one when I increase the frequency. So I increase frequency. Lo. So you see, it's getting squashed. More and more cycles can fit inside the 360 degree already. Where is 360? 360 is somewhere here. So you see, more and more cycles. Oh. Actually, you can make the frequency go even higher. Maybe go until very, 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 very high. Like this. Okay, so this is what I mean by your graph is squashed. Oh. Let's go back to 1. One. Okay, so original is this. What if I go lower frequency than the original? Then it will become more stretched out. It's like slow motion. So you like stretch out. So you see, nah, it becomes stretched out already. Okay, so that is how you can change the frequency by changing this number W here. Frequency, oh. how many cycles can fit into 360 degrees? Okay, so that is what you need to know about sine graph and cosine graph. How do you draw them and how to recognize? Now, for challenge, dun, dun, dun. if I ask you to draw... Uh, let me see, let me put it down here. Challenge time, ah, okay, you try and draw and see. If I ask you to draw y equals to negative 3 sine 3x without using a graphing software, can you figure out how to draw this? Ah? Can think of an idea? Take a piece of paper, sketch and see. What would be a way to draw this thing while I draw the axis for you? At least try la. Don't don't like ah yeah, I know already. Ah yeah, you try and see first. Okay, so if we have this x axis, y axis, and just for fun, actually I'm going to switch up the variables a bit. Let's say instead of y and x, I change to displacement and time. Hmm. Then how to draw? Don't panic. It's the same thing. So first step you want to do is you label your where is your 360 full cycle. You draw the normal sine graph first. How does the shape look like? Something like this. Something like this. Okay. This is your normal sine graph. Then how are uh, the amplitude, all these things? Actually, oh, you must not forget this one. Is affects the frequency. So it means in 360 must fit three cycles. So the pattern must repeat three times already. So oh yo, actually this one wrong now. How to chop up into three cycles? You chop into three sections first. See? One, two, three. Then you draw the pattern three times. One, two, three. Ah, now it's correct. Okay, so this whole part correct already. Now how we deal with the negative and the 3. Let's deal with the 3 first. Okay, so the 3, next step, I redraw this one. Okay, so now this one, the amplitude is 1. Standard, uh, only 1. But now times 3, so I make the amplitude 3 times. So 3 is somewhere, 1, 2, 3, here I think. You draw again. Lo. Now amplitude come until here. Oh, this is going to be very hard to draw, man. <laughs> I'll try my best. So 3, negative 3, so come until here. Then go up, then come down, then go up, then come down. Okay, whoa, the last step. Now, the negative sign, what does the negative do? This last one, do you remember what it does? It reflects, so it turns the graph upside down. So you need to draw upside down, no? Okay, I write a reminder here. Upside down. Vertically, you reflect. So, hmm, can I redraw on another graph? Ah? Let me do la. It's a bit crowded here, so I'm going to quickly sketch another graph out for you. Somewhere here and somewhere here. Okay, so we need to draw the green line but upside down. This is step one. 
This is step two. Where is green color gone already? Yeah. Green, there. This is step two. And step three, we are going to do our upside down. So we need to repeat the pattern three times. Here, here, and here. But now we go, instead of going up first, see, uh, instead of going up, we go down first. So go down, uh, down, zoom, so down and up, down and up. Okay, ta-da! So this is step three. Now you have the full y equals to negative three sine. Is it three? Uh? What was the amplitude? Uh? Oh, three sine three t. Okay, three sine three t. Don't forget this is... Graph of S, uh, not Y. S equals to 3. So on the Y axis, this will be S. And on the X axis, this will be time T in seconds. So that is how you can play around with graphs. If you know your basics, how to draw, how to reflect, what does each part do, then you can draw any kinds of graph. You can do the same with cos graph, uh, it's the underwear shape one. Okay, so just remember, inside number affects frequency. In one cycle, in 360 degrees, you must fit how many cycle? This one will tell you the shape. Is it like this one, go up, go down, or is it your underwear shape, which is the cos or sine? Then the in front one here, a flex amplitude. Amplitude. And lastly, if there are any negative signs, it will tell you whether it's your underwear shape is right side up or upside down. That's all. Okay, so make sure you know these graphs, how to use them. And they will be very helpful for your skills in A2 and I guess also in maths if you take maths. Okay, that's the end. See you in the next one.